Hey, this is Justin from Gold Penguin here, and this is the fourth video in a multi-part website series of creating a website in WordPress using the Breakdance Builder. Uh, today we're going to be going over creating a hero page, which will kind of introduce you to the different elements of a website of building with Breakdance. So yeah, let's get right into that. So head over to your WordPress website, go to Pages and Add New. I'm going to call this Hero Homepage and publish it. So again, you are currently working on an offline website, so you could just publish this right now and no one is going to be able to see it because no one can go to this link. And then once you publish the page, go ahead and edit in Breakdance. This should open pretty quickly. And now we see our header and our footer from our last video. So if you have not seen that yet or don't know how to do this, go and check that out before doing this one. And now we're gonna go ahead and set up a page. So the most important thing when someone comes and visits your website is to see a, a hero section, which is going to be what's in their face when they see your site. So go ahead and add a section to your page. And then in here, we are gonna add a picture, which is in background image. And we're gonna set the background of this picture. So let's say we're selling some real estate in the Miami, Florida area, uh, add whatever picture you want, hit choose, and that's going to take up now the bulk of this hero. So we're now we need to figure out a way to have this stretch to take up the whole person's screen when they're looking at this. But first, we're going to add an overlay on top of this since this might be hard to see some text on it. So go into the overlay tab. Let's add a black overlay. Again, go ahead and do whatever you want to do. And we're going to change the opacity to be, I'd say this is a decent level. Um, yeah, so once we're done with that, go ahead and close it. And then in here, now we are done with background. We can close this tab, head into the sizing tab, and we are going to add a height and take and make this take up the viewport, which basically says, hey, we're gonna take up you know the user's screen. So now when you go to the website, I'm gonna save this actually, and we'll show you on the front end, this is what it looks like. It'll take up the user's viewport. Um, there is a header that's at the top of here so it's going to be a little bit more to scroll down but yeah we're just going to leave it like this we'll go back into this and edit this page now we need to add some text on here so again this is a real estate website so we're going to add something related to real estate let's add a heading and we're also going to add text and then we are also going to add a button so i'm going to open up the structure pane so it's visually uh easier to see and this obviously looks terrible. So we are going to edit this a little bit more. Click on the section and go into the layout. And so the layout, now we say we want to make this in the center. And we want this to be in the middle of the page. This actually, uh, with the header here, looks a little funky because it's not really in the center. So you could keep this at the top. We'll do that for today. And I'm going to add a quick spacing over here of probably... 20 vertical width or let's do let's do 30 so vh is stands for vertical vertical width vertical height uh, vh stands for vertical height and if this is set to a 100 this is going to take up 100 percent of the vertical height whether you're on a phone a desktop whatever you are on so we're going to go ahead and add some padding there and then click on this as a heading in the horrible purple text it is and let's call this miami florida real estate developers uh, yep. Go ahead and set this tag to be H1, which tells Google, hey, this is the most important thing on the page. Go into the styling tab, change the typography to be a color that is easy to see. We'll go ahead and do white. And we want to make this bigger. So again, we don't want to use pixels because this is not going to scale properly no matter what we put. So go ahead and change pixels to rem. And let's set this to something like, let's see if six is too big. That is way too big four, three, I think three is a pretty good number. And again, you can always go ahead and test how this would look on mobile. I think this looks pretty good. So we can go ahead and do that. Now go into the text element and call this something. This will be the, the headline or the sub subheading of the website. We can go ahead and say the best real estate uh, firm serving all of South Florida. I'm really bad with this text, but <laughs> you get the point. Just add something kind of common here. Go into the styling back into typography, change this text. I don't really want it to be white. Again, I'm gonna make it a little tint of gray, slightly slightly darker, but we do wanna change this. So we see that this is at three rem. I'm thinking this is gonna look better maybe at two rem. So let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's a bit better than before. You might wanna go ahead and change the, uh, the typography, change the font. 
but I think this looks pretty decent for now. I do want to go back to the section and change the spacing to maybe 25 vertical height. I think this looks a little bit better, especially when you do switch to mobile. Um, and an and, and, and in an ideal world, I think this might be a bug, but this fitting the viewport should not really be... Actually, I guess it's not really a bug because we have the footer here, but if there was no footer, we would just have this taking up 100% of the page, as you can see right here. Uh, it's just with the header being here, then we're not going to be able to do that. So I'm not sure if Breakdance actually lets you change the sizing to be... Okay, we could do custom, and then we can change the custom height to be 80 vertical height, which should fill in the rest of this and look really great. So... Yeah, hopefully this makes sense, but 100 vertical height is going to take up the entire screen. But since we have a header that takes up about 20 uh, vertical height uh, elements, then we can set this as 80 and it looks pretty similar. I'd say maybe 85 and you have it taking up most of the page. But yeah, we'll go ahead and do 80. Now we'll head back into this button. It does look a little weird that these are cramped together. So we have our heading and our text, but hey, what do we do if we want to create some space in between this and the button? So there's a few ways of going about this. There's two things to add spacing. One is called padding and one is called margin. Padding is like, again, I mentioned this in an earlier video, if you are a kid going ice skating and you have knee pads on or, or arm pads on, it's kind of like protection in a way. So you can see if we go down to spacing and add about 20 pixels of padding, you can see that it adds this, you can see this little purple outline where it adds 20 pixels in between both of these elements. So this could be enough for you. We are adding it in the text uh, and we're adding a bottom margin, which kind of works like padding, but is slightly different. Um, in our example, this should work. So I'm gonna just play around with this. I think 40 is a good number. We are gonna want this button to be bigger and we are gonna want it to say something like learn more and the color scheme does not fit. So go ahead and change the text to something like learn more. Go ahead and make this go to your contact page or wherever you are gonna have this page set up. And then go into the styling tab, go into button and let's make this a, let's make it a custom button. Uh, I don't want it to be black, maybe uh, I don't know, we'll go with this dark purple just for the sake of this video, and then we are going to want to change the text sizing inside of here. So we'll make this a large button, and then let's see if we can change the typography. We're going to change the font size to be 2 rem. Uh, a little too big, 1.5. Uh, okay, we, we can stick with this for now. So this is going to be your hero. We'll save this. Now we have a heading, a subheading, and a button that's going to lead us into a contact page. So let's take a look at what this looks like on mobile, and it's going to look like this. Um, there is an issue. Okay, before we move on, I just checked how this looks on mobile, and I did want to correct myself saying this should be set to 100 vertical height, because if not, we are going to run into some issues on mobile. But when it is set to 100, take a look at what it looks like, and it's pretty good. So yeah, let's go back to the desktop, and we're going to continue. So after this, this section is going to be the hero. We are going to add a new section. Again, this is to separate our elements from one another. And inside of here, we are going to add a heading, and we are going to add some text. Uh, I'm not really good with the copy, so we are going to say about our service. And then, actually, let's do capitals. And then we will do sample text, and I'm just going to paste this a bunch of times. Okay. Um, I would say do this a few times. You know, you can go ahead and add some, some things to your site, but you can take this heading and set this to H2. So what I would do if I was a real estate company trying to get ranked, we would have the Miami, Florida real estate developers, and then over here, we would set this to a certain type of... Um, certain type of location. So we could say Miami, Florida, um, real estate, and then we could even change this to South Florida. I think that might work better. And so when someone's looking this up on Google, we'll see South Florida real estate developers and then Miami, Florida real estate. You could even get rid of this and just do Miami, Florida. Go ahead and add your sample text, whatever you want visitors to see as they scroll down. Uh, a useful tip, if you want to change learn more, um, we can go ahead, I'm gonna now make something so, this goes to our contact page, but what if you want some nice little effect where when you click on it, it scrolls down to Miami, Florida. So uh, I'm gonna take this button and I'm gonna duplicate it. And so here's where we're gonna use the use of a div, where we're gonna add a div to the section so that we can make these buttons kind of look a little bit nicer. Uh, we're gonna take a div, go ahead and add it 
drag it up here and take these buttons and kind of move your uh, click it and move your mouse to the right and that should automatically put this inside of the div now the div contains both of these buttons we can go to container set the width to let's say 50 percent that should look like this go into the layout and go to horizontal align center and now both of these buttons are going to be next to each other we can go ahead and center this add a 20 pixel gap in between and just like that it's working so we have a learn more and we have a learn more <laughs> i'm going to take the second one and change this to contact us and it's still going to go to contact while the first button i am going to remove the link and we are going to type a hashtag and go to miami so what this is going to do is go to a an anchor on the page. If we click this, it's not going to work now, but it is linked to hashtag Miami. So if we go down to Miami, we can click on this section. I'm going to change it to the header, actually. And we are going to add an advanced ID and call this Miami. I'm going to show you what this looks like on the front end now, where we can view it. And when you click on learn more, boom, it scrolls down right to Miami. So if you want to have two options, a learn more and a contact us, uh, you can see boom right here or contact will go to the contact page. So just a little neat trick to show, but let's continue developing this. So now once we're done with this, we can add some padding to the bottom of this text. Let's go ahead and go to spacing, add a margin. I will change this to rem and add a three rem margin and then go ahead and duplicate the heading, duplicate the text, and I will move it under one another. So this is if you want to continue, you know, typing something else, you could say other location, Florida, and go from here. So that's going to be it for this section, add the content as you please. And then now we are going to continue by adding another section and adding an icon list in here. So you could see each section does have its own padding in between, no matter what padding you, you put here, like this is all padding right here. This is padding, this is padding, and then there's still is padding, but we also have a margin on the bottom because we're not going to, I'm sorry, this is actually not padding. This is the margin that we added, where if we were to get rid of it, if we get rid of this, we could see that it is right next to each other. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and keep this at three rem and continue to our next section. So again, I am organizing these sections kind of based on what theme, what content is going to go in it. But you can go ahead and just kind of maybe create one section for the top and then another section for everything else in between. But we are trying to make this as easy to view as possible. So inside of this section, add and move on to an icon list. Uh, I found that earlier, an icon list. And just like this, we can go ahead and, and talk about, you know, something about maybe the houses that you are deciding to sell. Um, we can add a heading to this and call this some facts. Go ahead and change this tag to H2. Add some spacing. A We could use 3 rem again. And there you go. We got some facts over here. I think this is a little bit too much spacing uh, personally. But uh, go ahead and do as you wish. So yeah, let's do one. Some facts. If we do want to center everything that's going on in the page, click on the section because everything is relative to the parent and go to layout and change the alignment to be in the center of the page. So I'm gonna keep some facts the same, but let's go ahead into, into the list, go into the styling, typography, and we can change this. So we can see font size is set to 14. What if we want to make font size three rem? That is actually huge, so two rem, there you go. And then we could go into the icon, change uh, the size is gonna be in pixels, and there you go, just like that, we now have some facts on our website, customized however you would like them to be. So I was not going to include a pricing table in this, but I am going to show you, let's add a new section and add a pricing table. This would be very helpful depending on the business that you have, but a pricing table just lets you, again, customize your pricing. You have tons of options that you can do with this, but uh, we can go ahead and duplicate you know, three of these. Go back to the section and change the layout. Oops, let's change the layout to be horizontal with an alignment in the center. And we will add a 10 pixel gap in between these. So there you go. This is what it would look like. You can customize this however you want. But I'm not really going to focus on this since everything is kind of self-explanatory in the actual pricing table. You can change the text, the icon, really everything. Um, this element really lets you do a lot. So now that we did the pricing for, I guess, houses, uh, even though this definitely works more for services, I'm gonna add one more section. And inside of here, we are going to do a frequently asked questions list, which works just like this. I'm going to add a heading to it, move it up, change the tag to H2, 
and call it frequently, oops, frequently asked questions. Just like that, now we are <laughs> building our website. So we could scroll down, frequently asked questions, you can open these. Uh, if you go into the frequently asked questions uh, element, you can see that there's items inside of here that you can edit the question, edit the answer, and go ahead and customize really anything you want inside of here. Um, don't know what accordion does. And then first tab opened is just, hey, if you want the first tab to be open when someone scrolls to it, that's what you can do. So customize this however you want. If you want to change the layout to be on the right, you can. In the center, you can. Whatever you want, let's keep it in the center. And then I would say we're pretty much almost there. So I'm not sure if these elements are still working yet. This library is not working at the moment. But inside of here, we have a bunch of elements that we can work with our website with. Um, I did mention this in the last video, but I think we're just going to call it quits for today because this is somewhat of a decent, you know, landing page. We have our frequently asked questions. You could add some about tabs, uh, maybe some, you know, author information of who you are, who your company is. But, uh, yeah, so there really is a lot of things that you can add. Just scroll through all of these elements and see what you can do without needing to code anything or kind of mess around with these, these widgets. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. This is the Hero homepage tutorial. And if you enjoyed, please leave a like, leave a comment if you have any questions, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.